on to prove that if the potential is an even function, then we can always take xi of x to be either an even or odd function. So before we go on, let's do a quick recap of what is an even and odd function. So for an even function, if a function is an even function, then it satisfies this property that f of negative x is equal to f of x. So one example of this would be f of x is equal to x squared. And you can see that this function definitely satisfies this above condition. You can see that f of negative x is equal to negative x squared, which is equal to negative 1 squared times x squared, which is equal to x squared, which is equal to f of x. So you see that this condition is satisfied. And you can see that for even functions, there are actually functions that are symmetrical about the y-axis. So let's use x squared as an example. You can see that the graph is symmetrical about the y-axis. So that's what an even function is. As for an odd function, it satisfies a slightly different uh, property. So f of negative x, if it is an odd function, should be equal to negative of f of x. So another example is f of x is equal to x to the power of 3. And once again, you can check that this function definitely satisfies this condition. You can see that f of negative x is equal to negative x to the power of 3 which is equal to negative 1 to the power of 3, x to the power of 3, and this is just equal to negative 1, so negative x to the power of 3, which is equal to negative of f of x, so which satisfies this condition. And if you would like to graph x to the power of 3, it looks something like this. So you can see that uh, this other half over here is actually just a 180 degree rotation of this half over in the region where x is larger than 0. So this is what an odd function is. So with these definitions out of the way, let's get to the problem. So in this problem, we're given that we have a potential that is an even function. So let's say I have a, uh, a solution to this time-independent Schrodinger equation called xi of x. And if xi of x is a solution, then we know that this equation must be true. This equation must be true. And then I'm going to use this equation, and I'm going to substitute in negative x inside. And by substituting negative x, we get something like this. So v of negative x, xi of x, xi of negative x, equals to e times xi of negative x. And we're given that the potential is an even function. So recall what exactly an even function is. So if this is an even function, so f of negative x is equal to f of x. And if the potential is an even function, then v of negative x should be equal to v of x. And so you actually just obtain the time-independent Schrodinger equation again. So this tells us that if xi of x is a solution and the potential is even, is an even function, then this implies that xi of negative x is also a solution because from this uh, expression here, you can see that xi of negative x also satisfies the time-independent Schrodinger equation. So here we have a very important result. We know that xi of x and xi of negative x they're both solutions to the time-independent Schrodinger equation. And recall that from the previous, uh, from the previous part, now we're doing uh, problem 1c. Remember that in problem 1b, we proved that uh, for any given two solutions, we can always construct a third solution. So I can construct a xi of 3, which is equal to a linear combination of two other solutions. So xi 1 and xi 2 are solutions. Then I can construct another solution called xi3, which is equal to some constant times xi1 plus some constant times xi2. So in this case, our xi1 is going to be xi of x, and our xi2 is going to be xi of negative x. And so this tells us that we can actually, using because we know that this xi3 is also a solution, we, we can actually construct another solution. I'm going to call it xi plus of x. And then this xi plus of x, I'm going to define it as xi of x. So I'm, I'm taking c1 to be equal to 1 plus xi of negative x. So I'm taking c2 to be equal to 1 as well. And then this, by definition, is actually an even function, because you can test it. If you put in negative x, you see that you get xi of negative x plus xi of negative of negative x, which is just equal to positive x. So you have xi of x plus xi of negative x, which is exactly equal to this expression, which is equal to xi plus of x. So we see that this xi plus of x is an even function, and because of this rule, this is this xi plus of x is also a solution to the time-independent Schrodinger equation. So there we have it. We have proved that we can always construct an even function 
that is a solution to the Schrodinger, time independent Schrodinger equation, given that the potential is also an even function. And then we can uh, do something similar for xi negative of x, which we want to be an odd function. And then we can do that by defining, defining xi of negative x to be equal to xi of x minus xi of negative x. And then once again, we can check that this is indeed an odd function, because we, if we put in xi negative of negative x, you get xi of negative x minus xi negative of negative x, which is, a, which is a, uh, xi of x. So this is equal to negative of xi of x minus xi of negative x. And you can see that this is just xi minus. So you get negative of xi minus x. And so you can see that we can also construct a, func a solution that is an odd function because this property is satisfied. So you can see that for these two solutions, we can construct an even function, and then we can construct an odd function. And both of these will also be solutions to the time-independent Schrodinger equation.